Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and we're going to begin exploring the capabilities of this calculator and how they apply in algebra. So the next few sections will deal with capabilities that this calculator has that you will see very soon are very powerful in the realm of what it can do in, in regards to algebra. So one of the core topics of any algebra study is the study of functions. You learn to graph functions, you learn to make a table of value with functions, uh, and just functions are used everywhere. Now it turns out this calculator can, uh, you can define functions in this calculator that uh, actually can save you quite a bit of time. So let's say you had a function, uh, f of x, let's say, and it was equal to something and you know there's a lot of reasons why you might want to define a function in the calculator maybe you're going to evaluate this function at you know five different values of x and so it'd be nice if you could just define the function one time and then use the calculator to to plug in the values the easiest way uh... to uh... to to uh... define a function is to go ahead and type your function in. let's say f of x is equal to x cubed um, actually let's make it x squared minus 1 that's a function right you could plot that now in order to define the function in the calculator you want to go ahead and hit the store button and what you're going to do is store it into a variable just like you might expect but instead of just putting the letter we're going to hit alpha f for f and we we're going to specify f of x so what this is doing is it's saying uh, here's the function put it into something I'm calling a function f and I'm explicitly saying it's a function of x because that's the variable I have over here I hit enter and it says done so that is that is done now from this point forward if I go and actually type f of x in note first of all if I just put f and hit uh, enter I, it says argument error um, the reason it says argument error is because from this point forward, because I've defined f of x like this, it's assuming that if I put an f here, uh, that I need to put something in parentheses. So if I just put f of x back on the stack, it's going to spit out back at me whatever the function was that I defined to begin with, because that was what f of x is. But let's say instead of f of x, I want f of 1. What if I plug in 1? Uh, well, 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0. Uh, so that works fine. What if I put, uh, you know, 2 in here. Then if I put 2 in here, 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3. So it's calculating basically the value of the function. What if I put 5.2 times 10 to the negative 2? Or 5.2 times 10 to the negative 2 and stick that in the fun as, a fun as the function. It's going to go ahead and evaluate that and stick it out. So um, this is a very powerful thing that this calculator can do, that you can define a function and then go ahead and feed it arguments and um, it would it will be able to handle that for you now let me show you something else we haven't really gotten into all the sections of this calculator dealing with graphing in detail but I've done enough sort of teasing you so that you know that if you go into the y equals menu then you basically put your function in here uh, you know you can type in x to the fifth or whatever you want and then you go off and you graph it well if you have defined a function for whatever reason maybe you have a problem on your test and you have to make a table of values and then you want to plot that function well it's perfectly legal to put f of x because you've defined f of x to be that function and so when I stick that in there I've assigned whatever I've stored in f of x the function into this graphing placeholder and now when I go to the graph menu if I'm patient here then the graph will begin to appear and that's exactly what's happened it's x squared minus one so the graph is shifted down a little bit so that makes makes total sense so it's pretty powerful. Now, I haven't really gotten a chance to show you the full glory of this calculator, but just keep in mind in subsequent sections, see we're in the base display of the calculator in this algebra menu. Uh, there are all kinds of algebraic um, functions that we're going to be able to apply, factoring, expanding, zeros, and all these other things. And so being able to define a function is going to be very advantageous later on if you want to feed a function into one of these, these, uh, these guys that can perform these algebraic operations on it. Now, the way that I told you to define a function is, is perfectly fine. You can, and there, let me just give you one more example. What if another function is, um, instead, of, instead of f of x, what if you wanted it to be um, g of a, let's say. So let's say I'm going to do... Um, a raised to the fourth power. Let's just do it that way. 
and I'm going to store that in a function that I'm going to call g of, and I have to specify, whoops, let me go back and hit alpha a, because the variable here needs to match the variable here if I'm going to do it this way. So that when I hit enter, it says done. Now if I go in here and just ask the calculator, hey, go ahead and spit back at me what is g of a that I've just defined, it's going to give me what I've defined here. And I can do the exact same thing as before. I can go and put uh, 10 in here, and it'll take 10 to the fourth power and give me 10,000 back. You know, I can go and put 1.2 in here, and it can go and spit out the answer. So it doesn't matter what the independent variable is here. You can define any function you want. It's just that when you set the function up, you need to make sure the independent variable is in here. Uh, and likewise, let me go ahead and clear all this stuff off. If I go back into the y equals function, and I put uh, if I want to graph that function, you might think that uh, you, you can put g of a, let's go ahead and do it and see what happens here. Let me put a here and close it. You might think that this would work fine, but let's go ahead and try to graph this guy and see what happens. Error, undefined variable. So let's go hit escape, let's go back to the y equals menu. We know that this function plotted fine, the second function didn't plot at all. The reason is because that even though you can define a function in terms of whatever variable you want, whenever you go to graph it, the graphing program of the TI calculator doesn't understand anything unless it's a function of x. It's just the way the, the program is written. So all you have to do is very easy, just go edit it. Instead of a, you just stick an x in there. And what the calculator will do is take your function g of a and it will replace it with x and so then the thing can be graphed. So now we have them both in there. We go to graph the function. Shouldn't get any errors. First function will start to graph right about now. That's the um, f of x function we drew, drew. And then the second function will be coming momentarily, which is the x to the fourth power. And so there it is. And so we're going to get into a bunch of graphing stuff later. We'll talk about how to trace graphs and do all kinds of, of crazy things. But I just wanted to show you that you can uh, customize your own functions. If you happen to be dealing with a function quite often, you might just store it like that and then when you want to graph it, you can go ahead and graph it. Now, just for the sake of completeness, I've shown you how to define a function. I think it's the best way to do it. There is another way to do it. If you want to define a function in a different way, maybe, uh, maybe you prefer it this way. On the base menu here, we have all these menus up here, and we haven't gone through all of them yet, but if you hit F4, the other menu, the very first thing is called Define. If you hit enter, it'll put define down here. So I can define, let me go and define another function here. Uh, I of t, it's just I of t, and I'm going to set that equal to, so I've got to put an equal sign here, uh, let's say 7 times t. So here I have defined a function. Notice it's totally different. In the other way, I type my function in, I hit the store button, and then I hit the f of x or i of t or whatever it was. When you're doing it in terms of define, you have to define i of t and you have to put the equal sign uh, equal to whatever. You hit enter, it's done. Now let me clear that off. If I go and hit uh, alpha i of t and just hit enter, it'll tell me that's my function I've defined and then I can you know, go and put a, a number in there. Everything behaves exactly the same as before. It's basically doing exactly the same thing. It's just a different way to do it. Some books may mention it to you. This may make more sense to you. That's fine. It's under the F4 menu, define. It's either way you prefer to do it. It's doing the same thing. And you can graph these guys as well. If you go into the Y equals menu, let me go in just to make it a little bit cleaner. Let me delete this guy. Let me delete this guy. And then I'll put i of, now we did define i of t, but if remember if we do that and we hit enter and we try to graph it, it's going to tell us undefined variable because the graphing program only understands functions of x. So if I go up here and hit enter to edit this and make it a function of x, then basically all we're going to do is take our i of t function, replace it with x, so the calculator can graph it. I'll go into the graph menu there and let it sort of crunch those numbers for us. And there you go, it's a straight line because that's what I defined to be our function i of t. It's just a linear, a linear line. 
So we've covered quite a bit of, of really cool material because this, you know it's honestly the first calculator I've ever used that I was able to do this kind of stuff, and it's pretty it's pretty cool, especially if you have a very complicated long function, much much faster to define the function, and then let you go from there. Now let me show you one more thing. Let me clear the menu off. Uh, I, I'm tempted not even to mention this, but I do think it's important because you can you can trip yourself up. Uh, we've learned how to define functions, we've learned how to graph the functions that we've defined, we've learned how to manipulate it. Now it turns out that if you want to define another function, let's say uh, 4 times x you know, to the um, 4x squared, let's, let's call it, and we're going to store it in a function. Let's call this, let's call this function r. So I put alpha r. Now if I were going to define this function, I would do it just like this. This is exactly what we've done before. 4x squared stored in the function r of x. Here I've defined the variable you know, f of x, or in this case r of x, just like you might expect. And it would operate exactly the same way. Now it turns out that the calculator does somewhat understand. If you take that off and, and leave it like this, and hit enter, then you've, you still have sort of associated this expression with this, this sort of this placeholder R, and it does somewhat know what to do with it, but not really, you might think that you've defined your function here, but in fact you haven't, Let, at least not fully. If you come in here and hit R of 1 to try to evaluate the function R at 1 and, and go and do this, it's, it's going to tell you this is not a function or a program, because in order for it to be considered a function, um, you need to have r of x or some independent variable there to tell the calculator that it's a function. Likewise, if you take this guy and you go off to the graph menu up here, let me clear this guy, and you try to get it to graph, so let's go r and let's go ahead and put of x so it'll understand it, hit enter, and then we'll go off and graph it then it's going to tell me it's not a function or a program. So this is kind of one of those things, it's like a gotcha, where you'll, you'll watch the video, you think you understand how to make a custom function, you'll go in, you'll assign it, you think you're doing everything right because the calculator spit it back at you properly, but you're scratching your head, why is it not working? Well, what's happening here is the calculator is assigning this expression to this variable, but it isn't really treating it like a full-blown function because you don't have the parentheses uh, and the variable there. So if you're trying to graph the thing, or if you're trying to evaluate uh, in terms of f of x, then you need to go ahead and define it the way I showed you in the beginning of this video section. But if you did define it this way, um, you can still sort of evaluate values. All you have to do is basically put the value r right here, and then you need to press this um, up in this vertical bar, which which is the pipe symbol, and it just means width. So it's telling the calculator, okay, take the expression that I stored in R and evaluate that at uh, x is equal to, let's say, 2. At x is equal to 2. And then I go ahead and hit enter, and then it will go ahead and actually perform it. So if I put 2 in here, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is 16. So I know that this might seem a little bit odd unless you've seen this sort of notation before, but what it's basically telling you is um, that you're taking the sort of the expression that you've defined. This is more like defining an expression rather than a full-blown function. And assigning this expression to a, a variable r. But it, when I do it this way, I'm saying, look, take the expression. This vertical bar just means evaluate the expression at x is equal to 2. So in place of this vertical bar in your head, you might want to say the words, evaluate this expression at x is equal to 2. If I want to go and evaluate it at x is equal to 5, I can do it again. If I want to evaluate it at negative uh, 0.32, I can, I can do that. So I really have all of the flexibility uh, that I did in the function notation by doing it this way. It just looks a little bit weird. We'll do one more just so you can kind of get the hang of this. What if I want to take, uh, what if I want to take the function, uh, let's do a different function, square root of x, and I want to store that in the variable s let's say. So I haven't really created a full-blown function, but I've taken this expression and I've assigned it to the variable s. Now, if I want to evaluate uh, you know, different values of this variable here, then all I have to do is go ahead and hit s and hit this vertical bar, which means evaluate this expression at, and then I can say x is equal to 1. And then I'll have the square root of 1, and then I'll get 1. Uh, if I put in 2, 
or if I put in 4, then the square root of 4 will be 2. So it's saying take this expression, evaluate it at x is equal to this, and that's basically how you handle that. Now, same, same exact thing, if I go in here and try to put in s here, uh, put s of x, whoops, let me go ahead and hit enter, and I'll put uh, s of x. Close it off, hit enter, and then go and try to graph it, and then it's not going to work. So the bottom line is uh, when you're doing this sort of definition of functions, my personal opinion is unless you have a good reason, then I would define the functions in the way that we did here in the very beginning of the, of the video here, where if I had the function um, you know, 6x, I could just assign that to a, very, to a function, and I could call that function, uh, let's call it y of x, right? And then I have all of the capabilities. I can, I can put y of 1, y of 2, y of 3. I could evaluate those. I could stick this uh, function y, and I could put it in the graphing uh, guy, and I could graph it, and I can do all of those things. The only reason that you might really want to use the other one that I can really see is it just saves you a few keystrokes. Um, you can still evaluate different values, but you really can't graph it at all if you're going to do it in terms of the... Um, in terms of the other method that I told you when you don't have the explicit parentheses located here. And that's mainly the main difference between the two. You know, another advantage that you might have is that you, if you define a function, or uh, not really a function, an expression, uh, let's call it 89t, uh, and we store that in, in you know this variable q here, so we sort of have an expression associated with q. Um, you know, like I told you before, this calculator has a lot of algebraic functions. So if we hit F2, you have solve, factor, expand, and all these other functions here that we're going to get into later. If you were to take, and we're not going to do it in this section, but if you were to take that, that sort of uh, expression that we stored in, in Q, and we would p put that in here, the calculator, by and large, will understand how to expand and how to factor it and how to do all of these other solutions and things to it, even if it's not explicitly defined in terms of a function, you know, with, with parentheses x like that. Um, so it saves you a few keystrokes in some instances. It, it, the algebra menu will pretty much understand what you're talking about. It's just mainly that the graph menu won't. Um, the graph menu won't really understand how to do it. You won't be able to graph those functions. And also, to me, it just makes a little bit more sense to put, you know, a of seven instead of that other notation that I showed you. It just makes a little bit more sense to me. But to each his own, there's different ways to handle it. Now in the subsequent sections, we're going to be talking about the things in this menu. We're going to learn how to use these algebra functions, how to really get the calculator to operate on expressions and functions and, um, and, and do a good job of that stuff and save you some time with your algebra and as a double check to your work. But in this section, we've covered storing uh, functions in two different ways and also graphing user-defined functions can save you a ton of time.